welcome to Hair of the Rabbit podcast. We explore everything that is rabbit. We look at different rabbit breeds, history, superstition, pop culture, news, and more. I would like to thank you for joining me today, your host, Jeff Hittinger. I'm not an expert. I'm just curious about learning more about rabbits, just like you. We're going to start with the history of the Beverin. When I first heard this breed, I thought of rabbit. I thought of the rabbit on Winnie the Pooh or the Br'er Rabbit stories. I don't know where the association came from, but that was my first thought about the breed. The Beverin rabbit is one of the largest and oldest rabbit breeds. The Beverin has a rich European history, and was originally recognized in 1898, and was named after the town of its origin in the Was region of western Belgium, which is a small town close to Antwerp in Belgium. The rabbit's breed origin not unlike many other rabbit breeds, is up for debate. Some say the breed originated in England, while others say its name is derived from the place where it was first bred, which is the town of Beveren in Belgium. Believers in the later origin, which would be Belgium, say this rabbit was imported in the late 1890s into Britain. The Beveren was derived from crosses of the Brabant Co, St. Nicholas Blue, and Blue Vienna. The original color was a blue that mostly came about through selection of the self-blue St. Nicholas. While the early blue beverin showed varying depths of color and preferred color by the furriers, which was a light lavender blue. 1899 is the year St. Nicholas breeders give as the beginning of their breed of rabbits. Beverins factored significantly in their breeding program with uh, Flemish giants and perhaps other as of the local breeds. Breeders in St. Nicholas were finding marked blue and white rabbits among the kits in their nest boxes. They tended to have face blazes, perhaps a white necklace, and various spots and white feet. There were at least two local Belgian breeds with such markings. Watchtebeke, which is now extinct, which hailed from Watchtebeke, a Belgian town not far from St. Nicholas. The Watchtebeke rabbit had a blaze, white feet, and a thin white collar extending from the chin and chest to ring the neck like a half inch or one centimeter thin necklace of white. The Brabacone was a highly esteemed meat rabbit raised ex extensively in the Brabant region of Belgium. It had similar markings, however the white necklace was a lot wider. It is unclear whether or not the early Beveren breeds in Beveren actually favored solid rabbits over marked ones but the St. Nicholas breeders certainly included both in their breeding programs. Rabbits on the name of St. Nicholas Blues began hitting the Belgium show tables in 1906, which is when a controversy began to flare up over the names of the two exceedingly similar breeds. This was a tense time. The St. Nicholas rabbit breeders even suggested doing away with the Beveren name altogether. The suggestion of a new name didn't go well with the folks in Beveren who really did, not, did own the claim to initiating the breed. For a few years, confusion reigned about which name to use, but finally it was agreed that the blue and white rabbits would be called by the name of St. Nicholas Blues, and the solid blue rabbits would retain the name Beveren. Since the history of the Beverins is intertwined with the history of the St. Nicholas Blue Rabbit, we're going to skip over the St. Nicholas until a later date. There was no consensus, so early weights of the, for the breed, now we're back to the Beverins. There was no consensus, so early weights for the breed branched out and two types would eventually emerge, the standard Beveren and the giant. According to the American Beveren Rabbit Club, the Beveren breed was developed from crossing the Brabacone St. Nicholas Blue and the Blue Vienna. The breed was recognized in 1898 and the standard for the Blue Rabbit of Beverens was put into place in 1902. However, the first exhibit, ex exhibition of the breed would not be until 1905. Beveren rabbits quickly made their way to France, where they became hopelessly intertwined with the Vienna Blue breed. Blue Beverens were imported into Britain by Miss A. M. Martin and were shown for the first time in 1905 in Norwich. At the, judge, at the time, judges really didn't care for the breed. This changed after 17 people came together and founded the Beveren Club on May 29, 1918 in Birmingham. Beverens then quickly became the most popular fur breed in the United Kingdom. The strong Beveren Club began to recognize 
other beverage of fur rabbits and in 1925 changed her name to the British Fur Rabbit Society and later to the British Rabbit Council. In 1915, Blue Beverins arrived in America under the spelling of Bevrin, B-E-V-E-R-I-N. By 1919, the United States had a number of all blue rabbits, American Blue, Blue Beverin, Giant Blue Beverin, Barbacombe Blue, Blue Imperial, Blue Vienna, Blue Femme, and Blue Femish Giants. Edward H. Stahl of Holmes Park, Missouri imported the blue-eyed white Beverins in 1933 from England where they had appeared as sports, kind of a mutant, in 1916. A black breed already known in America as the Stitka breed became known as a black beverage. During the First World War, the V for victory, remarkably the historic V-shaped ear carriage of the beverage was developed. During this time, the beverage acquired a great amount of popularity with the British. Later in the early 1920s, the beverage was raised for rabbit pelts. During this period, the white variety became the dominating variety used for pelts due to being easily dyed by the furriers. After its introduction in the United States, it was later recognized by the American Rabbit Breeders Association on December 3, 1925. The blue variety of the Bevern was even raised in Buckingham Palace in London before World War II. If you would like to email me, reach out at hairoftherabbit at gmail.com or you can visit the website at hairoftherabbit.com. If you would like to support the podcast and keep the lights on, you can support us whenever you use Amazon through the link at the website on the support the podcast page. This will not cost you anything extra and I cannot see who purchased what. You can also become a Fluffle fan supporter by donating through Patreon. And again, there's a link at the hair of the rabbit podcast.com.